it's all over, da da da, the debate went bad. Here's the polls the day after. This has been my solace with the Midas Touch to tell you what the polls are saying the day after. President Biden has now actually taken the lead in the new morning consult poll, which was previously tied. This poll was taken after the debate. It's one of the top polls out there. 2,000 registered voters. This was taken on June 28th, and it has President Biden at 45 percent, Donald Trump at 44 percent. Donald Trump is furious about this poll right here. He's also furious that according to 538, the latest 538 poll has President Biden winning 52 times out of 100 simulations that were run by the very well-respected 538. Um, and 538 up the chances from 50 to 49 to now 52 to 47 in favor of President Biden. That's why. So post-debate, Biden's gone up in the polls. So there's nothing to panic about. It sort of seems like, let's stop and consider what job Trump needs to do versus what job Biden needs to do. Mm -hmm. Really, Trump has the bigger job here. Trump needs to walk in and he needs to convince anybody that's on the fence to be on his side. And to a degree, he needs to kind of get a few more sort of shoveled over, you know? Yeah. So he's got the bigger job. Oh, absolutely. And people that are, you know, on the Democrat side, even those who are much more moderate, so many of them have a bad taste in their mouth about Trump in general that it would be a hard sell to sway them over which Trump needs to do. All Biden had to do is not go out there and make a total ass of himself. Did right. Biden perform extremely well? No, not not particularly. No. But he didn't go out there and make an ass of himself. And he would have had to do like he would have had to like be throwing grenades at himself to like say something that's going to make all of these people who voted for him that are hardcore anti-Trump. Right. See, Trump is a better choice. Right. You know, well, I want to skip over here. So Luke Beasley was doing this. This is so Biden realizing he screwed up the bait. Uh, like I said, at the after party, he looked great. And I'm sitting there, I was kind of like, dude, where was this guy? This guy would have killed, right? Well, here's by the day after realizing, oops, I kind of <laughs> fucked up there a little bit. I was kind of too low energy. So here's his speech the day after the debate, his campaign speech. And Luke Beasley was covering this. He's done. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. Where was? Does <laughs> Luke say the same thing? Why wasn't that guy at the debate? Part of it's because Biden feeds off the crowd, and there was no crowd. Uh, so that kind of shot him in the foot. But Trump goes into he does a speech after the debate, and what does he do? He talks about batteries and boats and sharks and Hannibal Lecter again. I, I mean. Like, I know. Yeah, I know. So here's, here's Trump's after the debate speech the day after. Army tanks. They want electric planes. What happens if the sun isn't shining while you're up in the air? Well, sir, those, you know, they, I told you there'd be problems, sir. No, they want electric everything. Every, they want electric boats. The problem, the boats, they, they don't float. Because the battery is so heavy, it sinks the boat. They say, we don't care. We want them anyway. So... It's like we got to go back to grade school science class for, for Trump. The boats won't, the batteries are too heavy. You do realize we have nuclear power, you know, aircraft carriers and submarines and they float. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're huge. They're like cities that float on the water. It's called displacement, dipshit. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do I have to fucking pull back Archimedes? What the hell, dude? <laughs> I mean... So, yeah, that, that's it. Those are the two How choices. are you going to sway 
again, Trump has a big job to do. And how is he going to persuade somebody that's on the fence to vote for him when he goes out and gives these speeches that are really difficult to even make sense of? I'm not even talking, do we agree or disagree with him at this point? Do we even understand what he's talking about, you know? And we talked about this before, where if we're talking just the popular poll, the popular vote, Biden won by almost 9 million votes. It's a huge margin of victory on the popular the popular vote. So to win that, Trump's got to convince at least 4.5 million people to not vote for Biden again while the economy is up under Biden and it was tanked under Trump during COVID. I mean, so there's that. On top of the fact, if you're talking about the election itself with the Electoral College is going to come down to four or five, you know, key battleground states, and it's coming down to four or 500,000 votes, probably something like that. Well, he's got to switch four or 500,000 people. Plus, a lot of those states have new voters, and those new voters are Generation Alpha that are just able to vote, and most of them are going to be liberal, just right out of the gate. They're not going to vote for Trump. Because they're going to be, you know, and half of, at least half of them are women who are going to be pissed about we don't have as many rights anymore because of Trump, because of Roe v. Wade. So, I mean, it's a huge hurdle for Trump. You know, it's a big hill for him to climb. And what is he doing? He's just doing the old gracious stick. He's getting up there talking about whatever movie he just recently watched. You know, I had a conversation about batteries and boats and sharks. Uh, okay. Thanks, Grandpa. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know. Anyway, if you guys are all panicked, though, that, oh, no, Biden's not going to make it, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, doesn't really matter because the upside to the Democratic Party is there are a lot of people in the wings that, you know, will probably be really good candidates. And the guy who's probably leading right now is this guy, Gavin Newsom, who's the governor of California. And he was a surrogate for Biden. And I guarantee you this guy's running in 2028 for sure. But if something happens to Biden, this might be the guy who takes over. So I'm not worried either way. Uh, But here's Gavin Newsom, and he's talking to uh, MSNBC. Let me skip ahead a little bit um, just to give you a sense of this. I'm not a huge fan of Gavin Newsom, but, you know. He's better than Trump, man. I'd take a fucking wet mop over Trump. Uh, I'm old fashioned. That's what matters to me. I thought the lies, I was taking notes about all the lies. I ran out of paper. Donald Trump, no accountability on those lies, talking down the American economy, talking down uh, our democracy. Uh, That was alarming. Uh, This is a world we're living in now. Donald Trump created where 13 year olds uh, have to uh, deliver the child of the person that impregnated him. Uh, This is a world that Donald Trump has created. And so for me, uh, it was daylight and darkness. Uh, And I'm very proud of the president's record and I'm very proud for his vision of the future. I mean, let's talk about the substance though, because I feel like on the signature issue that Democrats have, which is abortion, the president's response was garbled and um, undirected at best. Yeah. Do you feel like he did what he needed to well, do I, I on, think, on an issue that could motivate voters in the polls? I, I think it's significantly insignificant because it's de minimis because the American people have made up their mind. Uh, they don't support the policies of Donald Trump. They certainly don't support his policies or his assertions. Somehow, the American people always wanted this to be states' rights, which yeah. was laughable and absurd. So from that perspective, I don't think that will matter. Uh, you saw it in all the elections since Dobbs. Were- so basically, just a my side note, one, I don't think it's going to be an issue with Biden. I still think he's he's got the edge. Trump's got to make up way too much ground, and he's losing ground. Even after winning the debate, he's losing ground. And even if Biden were to tank or or drop out for whatever reason, he's too old, he's sick, he dies, whatever. We've got other guys who could, and I I mean, honestly, I think Gavin Newsom could easily easily kick Trump's ass in an election. I mean, he's younger, he's better looking, he's smarter. You know. Like I said, I'm not my favorite policy-wise, but still, yeah. I mean, you got you take what you can get in an election. You don't ever get the two candidates you want. 
you know. Yeah, that that, that happens rarely. Um, but, you know, I got to say, again, it goes back to the same thing. When we're going into these things, we have to stop and look at what job does each of these people need to do mm-hmm. in order to, you know, gain enough votes to make them the front runner. And Biden didn't have as big a job to do. Trump had a really huge job to do, and he may have won the debate, but I don't know that he managed to do the job he had to do. Yeah, they both they both dropped the ball. Because he kind of, he kind of looked like a crazy liar out there. I mean, I'm sure his hardcore base was all about it, but I kind of went into there, you know, and I'm not on the fence. Clearly, um, Biden's going to get my vote no matter what, but mm-hmm. um, I went into there at least kind of hopeful that, you know, Trump would show up and speak of something of substance and whatever, but it kind of just sounded like the same old rigmarole again. Every single time they ans- asked him a question, deflecting and trying to just bring up the border, even if it had nothing to do with border, it just kind of a lot of nonsense. And when it was brought up about his felony charges, you know, he goes, well, Hunter Biden is is right. is a felon now, and uh, Joe Biden might become one too after he's at, like, what? <laughs> oh, and I, what I are we talking about? What are oh, you talking oh, about? Oh, oh, I didn't sleep with a porn star. I didn't sleep with a porn star. It's like, first off, if you're saying that in a debate, you're already fucked up. Second off, who cares if you slept with her? The fact is, you lied about it and, <laughs> and committed a crime. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, why, yeah. Um, why does it matter who you slept with? Nobody cares. You know, my point is, like, so much of these things, lies or otherwise, just seem like him kind of spouting a bunch of nonsense, which even people that are on the fence are like, yeah, but this guy's spouting a bunch of nonsense. Like, who wants to vote for that? None, none of it was enough to sway them over. He needed to come in and he needed to attack some serious issues to make himself actually right. sound more competent than the current president, and he failed to deliver on that. Well, and I'll tell you this. Independent voters, they're not stupid. They're just, they don't pay attention. And a lot of it's because they've got jobs and shit. They've got kids. They've got, I mean, they don't have time. When they come home, they don't want to watch the news or politics. They want to watch, you know, whatever. Young Sheldon. I don't know what whatever they're watching, right? Reruns they want to watch a little mind candy. They don't want to, they don't want to hear politics and the body count from their local area as much and right. I, I don't blame them yeah but they're not like like you, you we both teach you know we both work with, with finance we have to pay attention to this stuff we have to pay attention to the politics because it affects how things happen um it affects money and it affects people's personal lives so we got to know this stuff if there's going to be a huge tax change we got to know right um so it's just one of those things where we're tuned into it but the thing about it is is what they want to hear and you're absolutely right they want to hear, what are you going to do to make my life better? And at least Biden has some stuff. So even though he lost the debate, he did actually list some stuff that he wanted to do to improve the situation and things that they've done to improve people's lives. What he needs to do is just hit that message. And his message needs to be, these are my three big solutions, things I want to do to improve your life, right? And Trump has no solutions. Right. He just wants to bitch about brown All people. All Trump has is, but this guy might be a, a felon too, and <laughs> right. the border and the brown people are coming. But like, okay, so how are you going to make my wallet better, my day-to-day life better, right. my medical whatever better? Like, how are you going to make these things better in my world? Because all I know right now is that, like, you're trying to make me afraid that Biden may or may not have charges brought up on him or something like that. But like, while maybe I care about that, like I kind of care more about my day-to-day life than that stuff. So right. what are you doing for me? Yeah, but that's what they need to do. That's what Biden needs to do. That's what Trump needs to do. And Biden does now need to get out there and he needs to start acting like he has some fucking energy. <laughs> and he's not a decrepit old man, right? And Trump needs to get out there and try to Turn around. Look, I'm not really a dick and a criminal, but I don't know how he's going to do that because he is. That's all he is. And Trump needs to come up with some sort of vision for the future other than I'm just going to go get revenge on everybody I don't like and I want to be a dictator because that's all he's got. So 
That's your election, ladies and gentlemen. Those right. are your choices. Um... <laughs>